Greetings viewers, I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey today, a journey through the chaos of my mind. What you can see here is the results of some experimentation and in a moment I am going to take this piece apart and then attempt to remember how I made it in the first place so I can do a demo and show you how to make it. But first I need to retreat to the other room so I can set my camera up and I've got two hands with which to uh, show you exactly what this is all about. Once we've demonstrated this piece, we're going to go on to this one, which looks very exciting, doesn't it? Which is going to be an offshoot of this one. So please stay tuned and enjoy the ride. Before we start, I might just as well show you this piece of chaos here as well, which is also the result of my experimenting. I have a very cluttered mind, as you can see, but uh, hopefully all will become clear once we start the demo and once I've tidied up this mess. So, I've cleared some space and we're ready to begin. What do we have here then? Well, this is yet another example of my experimenting with invisible paper clips. It's not finished, but I got to the point where I was playing around yesterday and it was that moment where you think, oh, I wish I'd recorded myself making this. So I've stopped at that point and then I'm going to deconstruct it, reconstruct it, and then we can move on and finish. So let's go a bit closer so you can see what I'm showing you. It's a very simple structure. It is just basically made up of invisible paper clips. So we have one here, so a very large one from a, a longer sheet of paper, and then that tucks under there. And the plan is that I will then insert a signature in here. So that's that part there. Then tucked and wrapped around this bit. Oops, I'm back in there. Difficult. There we go. Are more invisible paper clips here and here. And these are made from one long strip of paper, which as you can see, wraps around the back and then has another one there. And this will be glued down so that the whole thing becomes one piece. So let's take this apart and I will show you how I made it. I'm just going to carefully remove this. Oh, cat's hissing at the dog in the background. Apologies for that. Okay, so I'm just going to carefully remove this in the hopes that I can remember how I did it. Okay, I'm just going to pop that back on as it was and take that off there. So this part is just a long strip for the case. It's a little booklet. I'm using some 12 by 12 paper from Craft Consortium, which is a patina, and I've chosen this particular piece, double-sided, it's very attractive, I really like it. Okay, so, so obviously that's uh, 12 inches long, and I'm going to make the width round about three and a bit inches, three and a half inches, which is nine centimetres, so I'm just going to cut that. This is what I want on the outside. So I'm folding over this way first. This is going to be the outside eventually, even though it looks like it's inside now. Okay. So we want the long side of the paper clips here. We're going to flip over and we're going to fold up where the bottom of those paper clips are. Like so. And then we're going to turn it over again and we're going to fold here where the tops of the paper clips are. That's given us Our paper clip there, which means we can then fold this over, tuck it into the point where you feel like it's safe, <laughs> and then we're going to fold down here. Now, depending on your plans, if you think you're going to have quite a bulky signature in here, I would create a spine. Um, if it's just going to be one or two pages, then you can just do a single fold. So I'll show you what I mean by a spine. Okay, I am going to fold this so it's going to land about there, approximately. But 
I want a little bit of a spine in here, so I'm just going to pinch there just to give me a rough idea of where I'm working with. So I'm going to come down with my scorer there, and then I'm going to give it, I might not go too wide, just another line there. So that when we insert our signature, it's going to go into, into there, and then we'll have a little bit of a spine which just gives us a bit more space and a good burnish with your bone folder. And there we have it. So that is our very simple little booklet part. And we can glue it down. True to form, I managed to <laughs> mess up the next bit of the video. So I'm using another piece of paper just to show this bit about the gluing. So if you're wondering how the, the, <laughs> the pattern keeps changing, that's why, so I'm just redoing this bit for you. So uh, what, I, what I keep doing is I get so excited and I'm so into my make that I forget that the camera is there and I go off camera like this and you can't see it. And I wanna make something at least vaguely professional for you so that you can actually see what we're doing. So what I'm going to do now is glue it down. Now, the other day I was watching a video from a new lady I discovered um, called uh, Café Craft. She's a French lady and she did this really cool technique where she made a little slit here. So this is where the crease is. She made a little slit here and you'll see in a minute the purpose of that. Probably not the best way to do it over your fingers but I'm being very careful I promise and then these paper clips will poke through the slit like so look at that and then we can thread some ribbon through so this is the actual one <gasps> don't look at that bit yet that's a spoiler <laughs> this is the one that um I filmed where it was down here off camera. Anyway, so this is how you do it. So you just make a little slit and push it through. Um, so we'll pop it back for the gluing bit. So to glue it, you just literally glue around your paper clips. So we're gluing in there. Give it a good squash. And then we're going to, now we've got our slits, pop that through there that through there it's about what we want make them even double check we're on camera come on glue you can do it do that your pesky glue give it a good squirt and squish that down okay so that is the bit that I did off camera down here and we're back on camera and it's going to be a seamless edit except I've told you my trade secret. Stuck that rather silly underneath <laughs> there under the glue. Don't do that okay. This is, this is going to be like the third version I've made of this because I keep making silly mistakes. Right. So I'm not going to make another one. I'm just going to let that glue dry and I'll probably stick something over it <laughs> to get rid of the sticky marks. But that, my friends, is how you make that part. Okay, let's go back to this one. This was the original one where it all worked perfectly yesterday. First time when no video was recording. It's like the other day. I went out for a walk with the dog and I saw an otter. Now, that itself is pretty amazing. I didn't have my phone with me, didn't have a camera. Um, but it was a very quick glimpse of the otter. Anyway, the next day I went back and forgot to take a camera with me. And did I see an otter again? Yes, I did. But no, it wasn't just one, it was two. And they were playing or fighting or something. Uh, so they didn't even see me. And I was able to watch them go cross the path, go into the river, splash around in the river, um, and I didn't have anything to record it for posterity. 
but I did enjoy watching. It was a beautiful sight. It was truly amazing. Anyway, enough of otters. Let's go back to the joys of the invisible paper clip. So this is a nice long piece of paper. And if we were to measure it against the length of the piece of paper that we're working with. Ah, oh, look at that. It's 12 inches. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do now is make some invisible paper clips. Okay. So we start off by folding over the top. And I'm using these small ones. So we fold over the top. We turn over. We lift and we fold over. Okay, so we've made our first one. So let's just pop that on there. Okay. There, so we've got our first one. And what we're going to do is we lift, fold it on the back like so, fold it over. Take our paper clip again and we're going to put the short side to the front. So here. And then we're going to fold it up. And we're going to fold it over. So now we've got two paper clips. Then we're going to turn it over again. So then we've got this last little bit of tail here. We take our final paper clip and we fold to about the length of the paper clip. Pop it in, short side back. Okay, so that means we can then fold up, fold over. I'll do that again, okay? So we've got our last piece of paper here. Okay, we're going to fold down to the length of the paper clip. We're going to put the short side at the back. Then we're going to open up this piece of paper and we're going to fold to the base of the short side of the paper clip. So we're going to fold it over like that. Okay, then we've got the top of the paper clip and we're going to fold that over. And then we have our third paper clip. Okay, so now all you need to do is um, unravel it all, <laughs> glue it down. I don't like the white bit on this, so I'm just going to give it a bit of inking. All done. This is the one with the sticky glue on. So I'm just going to um, embellish it a bit. So I'm just, just so I didn't mention the last time, you just need to obviously make your invisible paper clip strip smaller than this. So this is four centimeters. So I'm gonna make my invisible paper clip strip for this one, about two and a half centimeters. for my paper clips and then I'm going to use some of this to make a decorative edge which of course I already planned <laughs> yes I'm going to make a decorative edge uh, to go across there so that needs to cut about there I'll just cut that off and I'll just go and get some fancy scissors to cut a nice edge I'm going to use these scissors with this scalloped pattern. Yeah, and I'll orange them up a bit. Do the old peacock feather. Yeah, I'm going to stick that on. 
there. And while I've got the ink out, I'll just sponge up these edges as well because there's a bit of white there from where I cut. I have already folded this, but I shouldn't have. So just pretend you can't see that, okay? There's no fold there. No fold. So that's going to stick on there. And I'm just going to go around three edges because then we'll create a little cut spot should we wish to use it later. See so what happens. Happy accidents give you ideas for new things. I'll just find that line around. Uh, it sort of goes. So you could thread this through here. I might go and find a bit of thread or ribbon or embellishment. It goes better, but that would look very nice, couldn't it? So there we have it. We can pop um, now. Let's create a signature. I'm getting ready to make my signatures now, and uh, I don't have any paper that really matches this. So what I'm going to do is get some white, and then I'm going to use my distress inks to have a bit of fun. So I'll do that on camera in, in a moment. But first of all, we need to make sure it's the right size. So although this looks like it's a nice fit, when you're going to fold this and then tuck it in, it's going to get a bit bulky. So by the time you tuck all that, you know, you're going to have several pages here. And by the time all that gets tucked in there, it's a bit, it's a bit bulky. So what I'm going to do is I want it ideally to finish probably about there. Well, it's going to be a very narrow book, so I'll probably stick, even though I've got that spine, I'll probably just stick to maybe three, three pieces of paper, so six pages, um, and trim it down so that I've got a bit more space to, to tuck under. So now, that means we've got this bit here to tuck under, so I think that's going to work. There. Okay. So next I'm going to get some of my Distress Inks in various shades that I think are going to match. I've got a mixture of oxides and inks that match the colours of my booklets. So what I'm going to do now is lay down some ink on the back of this cutting mat. Pop a bit there. Try not to contaminate my mats. And then I'm going to get some spray, which lives in this container here. Oh, it is there. I thought it was gone. <laughs> I was about to say, but for some reason it's disappeared. But okay, let's activate that with a bit of water. And then I'm going to get my pieces of paper and dip them in the ink. <gasps> Look at that lovely effect. Isn't that beautiful? I should probably only do one side at a time, ideally. really and then let that dry and you can reactivate it with a bit more water these are all dry so I'm just going to come in with a little bit of Distress Ink and touch up a few bits, add a bit more colour here and there.
So I'm just going to trim this all to size and then I'll sew it in. There we go. I've sewn in a little booklet. You can just about write over that if you've got a dark enough pen. <laughs> but it looks pretty cool. And then that tucks in to there. So I have made two more. And um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to link them all together to make a matching set. So I'm going to find some nice ribbon and tie these together. Well, I might use some of this wax thread maybe. No, I think maybe some of this, if I can find some sari ribbon that's the right colour, I'm going to use that to tie them all together. I've got this lovely cord thread, fibre, don't know what you call it. Um, I think it's going to look really nice actually. I was just going to thread it through like so. Now I must confess when I made these I started off with the intention of only making one and then I thought actually it would be quite nice to make a set and tie them all together so I would suggest if you are going to do that that you measure it a little bit more carefully than I did I mean it's almost there but to be perfect I would have measured exactly where I was popping these paper clips in so please bear with me seek your humblest forgiveness for not being better organized it's just that I like to invent on the go and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't so the other option would have been to start all over again but i'm not going to do that i had enough trouble making these without starting all over again I'm just trying to thread this through so i've gone through three round the back and then Final one. There we go. And then we can tie this off in a nice bow or something similar. Let's have a bit extra. So I've got plenty to play with. Trip that off. There we have our three little mini booklets, each of which opens up inside. And then we've got all of these little tuck spots. So the next thing I'm gonna do before we completely finish this off is make some things to put in the tuck spots. Well, I've finished adding the little signatures in. I've got my binding which as you can see looks pretty cool. Um, obviously there's different ways you could do this and um, you could take a thinner ribbon and you could wind it through like that, sort of a crisscross effect, um, a bit like a, a bodice from Victorian times, you could do that. Um, I quite like this because it matches the colours. So let's have a quick look through. So what I've done, I've just popped some of these quote stickers here and tucked a couple behind here. And then when you open this one up, I've added a quote there. And then we've got the signature that I made. And if you recall, I made this because I don't didn't have any matching paper. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun creating my own. So that is that one. And then on the back, there's another little tuck spot there and another quote. Second one, a couple of tags. So here we have a longer piece of paper. I just fold it up in a different way just to make it a bit quirky and then I pulled through that idea of the scalloped edge from the other one uh, and another quote and then when this tucks back in you can just tuck it underneath there so that acts as an extra tuck spot anyway um, and then on the back a couple of tags another quote and you can see these tags I these were just white tags and I've just um, added some distress inks and some splashes of water so that they match the design so please with those more quotes more tags and then just a very simple one page 
and put signature on that one. And then on the back, a couple more quotes tucked in. So the possibilities for this are pretty vast. There's all sorts of things you can do, different variations, different sizes, different ways to bind it. You don't have to do three together. You could just do one and have a bigger signature in here with loads of pages. So I invite you to go and have a try, go and have a play, see what you come up with. And if you do create something, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know any feedback as well about my videos trying to improve with every one that I do. So feedback is really valuable. Um, so if you've got any constructive criticism, I will be more than happy to take it. Anyway, the next make I'm going to do takes this idea, but then turns it into a bit more of a sculptural journal piece. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm going to go and quickly get this one edited and live on YouTube so I can focus on the next one. See you soon.